Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the podcast. My name is Mel and I am a yarn dyer living on the Orkney Islands off the north coast of Scotland. And if you're new here then welcome and if you're a return viewer then welcome back. I am going to try and get through this relatively quickly this episode. I know I say that almost every episode but I have only got four projects to, sh four projects to show you this episode. Two finished objects and two active works in progress that I've been working on. One of which you have not seen yet because apparently I have to cast new things on all the time even though I have about half a dozen other projects unfinished but here we go. The first finished object I would like to show this episode I'm actually wearing and you can't see it very well in shot but I will stand up to show you. Just bear with me. This is the Hello Gorgeous sweater which I have steeped into a cardigan and it is a colorwork sweater as you can see with all these pumpkins designs in the York and I have knit it in colors similar to the original design which is quite subtle and not too I don't know Halloween autumn in your face type colors and I absolutely love it I have knit it kind of hip length ish it's slightly longer than hip length and uh, it doesn't have any waist shaping it just drapes really nicely and I'm really happy with it I'm getting a little blinded by the side window in here so I do apologize if I am looking a little strange on camera today the design like I said is called hello gorgeous and it's this design by Lacey Williamson of Windwick, Windwood Farm even. And I believe it is her first pattern that she has released. And I got this when it was first, first released. And it was updated uh, just before I cast it on. And what I should have done was trust the pattern in its second draft. Because I'd kind of adjusted where there was mistakes in the in the first release and um, adjusted made my own adjustments and what I should have done was trust the second release of the pattern it's supposed to be knit with zero to two inches of negative ease which I didn't want and so I knit a bigger size and I made a bigger size than that to make it work with my gauge and this is where the trouble started when I swatched for this when I did a gauge swatch the yarn you're supposed to use is fingering weight yarn and knit on a 3.75 millimeter needle for a gauge of 21 stitches and 32 rows per four inch and I could not get that normally on fingering weight I would knit a three and a half mil needle and get a 24 stitch gauge but even going up to a four millimeter needle I was getting a 24 stitch gauge and I couldn't understand why but I think I went wrong here I suspect I tried the four mil and probably did get a roundabout gauge and didn't like the fabric and made a note on the pattern I can show you this because it's not where there's any instructions I made a note on the pattern here saying 24 stitches and 28 rows but I also put 3.5 millimeter so I suspect I tried it on a four and didn't like the fabric it was obviously too open oh no I did try it on a four I ended up knitting it on a four maybe I didn't get gauge and I tried going larger and still couldn't get gauge or didn't like the fabric and I must have made a note I don't know what I did but I got confused because in the time it, between gauge swatching for this and actually knitting it I just went and looked at what I had written down which was three and a half millimeter 24 stitches 28 rows no four millimeters rather I have four millimeters and 3.5 millimeters wrote for the rib so I just trusted what it said which was fine I mean it's knit up lovely and the, the fabric's lovely but when I would finished the yoke and tried it on just below where I'd separate for the sleeves so I knit an inch or two below the yoke so I could try it on and it was huge and I checked my gauge and it was no longer 24 stitches or it was but it was slightly off and the yoke was massive 
it was huge and I wasn't happy and I nearly frogged it the whole colour work yoke but I didn't I stuck with it and I put it to one side and slept on it not literally you know slept on it and decided and said I would turn it into a cardigan because the way a cardigan you wear a cardigan and it hangs is different to a sweater so it's got quite a lot of positive ease in this cardigan now but whereas if it was a sweater with the positive ease it would have looked quite broad on the shoulders because it's a yoked sweater it the construction of it means that the shoulders tend to look broad anyway unless you keep it quite fitted and I didn't want that because I'm quite broad on the shoulders anyway so making it into a cardigan meant that you kind of it, it hangs you know it, if I just lower the camera a little bit um, you wear a cardigan it kind of drapes and hangs down so whereas this neckline here is down here it would have been up here and everything would have been heavy up here and broad and that's not what I wanted so I steaked it and I did a steaking instruction video which I uploaded a few days ago uh, on how I did that in a garment which was basically never designed to be steaked or an afterthought steak as it were one where you hadn't planned on steaking it but then when you knit the sweater you decide you want to turn to a cardigan anyway and it's worked out really well I was lucky enough that I was able to do the steak between two of the pumpkin designs but if there had been a pumpkin in the middle I would have just used the entire pumpkin area as the steaking area and I would have had the pumpkin and then some plain knitting and then the button band would have been sort of there instead I would have made it work I couldn't turn the yoke around slightly as it were because there was already short rows on this but if you are knitting a cardigan from a sweater that doesn't have short rows you would be able to kind of swing around where the yoke was and adjust for where your steak was in that sense too but I didn't have that option with this one I love it for a first design sweater I think it's really really good the changes that I made other than the steak the only things were I obviously did a button band and I made the sleeves full length where the design they had been three quarter length or slightly short three quarter length and it had been more of a fitted design. Also the neckline this is quite wide. Um, I think if you had been knitting a negative ease it would have been smaller size and therefore would have been smaller per size but I don't like too big an open neck on a sweater but on a cardigan because of the way you wear it like here I have a collared dress on and you can have the collar of the cardigan sit lower down um, that's not a problem and again with a cardigan it's a different situation the yarns that I end up using were some that I had in stash leftovers for oh the sun's gone in hmm. um, leftovers from other projects and for future products that haven't been used yet so I used if I find them let me find the label for this one I've used this green which is drops flora in colorway 15 I think Wait, this is green it's it's like a mid green drops flora and it is a alpaca wool blend this one I used all drops flora in the colorway york this was left over from my husband's flax sweater. The brown, the, the mid to dark brown, is not a leftover, but I have kind of used the leftovers because this is to make the, is it Kelly, Kelly Muffs? Kelly Muff mittens? Kelly Muff mittens? Um, it's a pair of wrist warmers with little um, fly agaric mushrooms on it and this is for the background colour but I haven't knit those yet but I use hardly any of this because it's only been used for these darker brown sections so I've got loads left over for those and I also used Drops Flora in peachy pink for the pumpkins I bought this one especially for this kind of subtle light orange colour and it was in the same base um, it's more of a salmon-y colour um, but it works really well and I didn't want too 
bright orange pumpkins because I wanted this kind of subtle contrast in the colour work yolk. I've been really enjoying kind of those low contrast colour work yolks um, that people do sometimes and I, I just love the look of it. If you get the colours right, so there's contrast but they're not high contrast, I really really like it. And for the main body, I've used Drops Nord in the colourway 07, which is beige, I think. Um, I do have some of the Flora in their kind of equivalent colour. And I had bought a ball of this a bit back for another colourwork sweater, for the contrast colour on another colourwork sweater, which hasn't been there yet. <laughs> But when I did a colour swatch for the yolk, the flora equivalent, there wasn't as much a contrast between the brown and the beige, but the Nord, I think it's because the Nord, I don't know if it's more of a slightly cooler beige, and it just seemed to contrast, I mean, there was hardly anything in it when you held them alongside each other, but the, the actual swatch really showed up the difference in the colour value between this one and the Flora, so I end up using the Drops Nord. It's almost the same base. It is also a wool alpaca blend, except this one also has nylon in it, so you can knit socks with it. And I have two whole balls of that left over, plus, you know, a little scrap. So 100 grams worth, and I'm going to knit some nice wintry warm socks. I'm, I might make them quite long as well, long and slouchy or textured up cable, not cable, I couldn't call it a cable socks. Um, something nice and cosy for the winter. Probably in the new year though, because I have Christmas knitting to do before then. My second finished object for this episode, I am going to hand over to Past Mel in a moment. But first I will just tell you what the pattern is. It is the Hubble Bubble Double Trouble Socks with jack-o'-lantern pumpkins on the heels. They are a stripy sock with colourwork heels by Surfing Ducks. I really like these. I basically used the colourwork charts for the heels and used them on my usual recipe for a toe-up vanilla sock, which, if Pasmal hasn't mentioned, is Turkish cast-on toes, gusset, slip stitches, which I only did on the bottom and slightly up the back of the heel before doing the colour work at the back of the heel. The only, only other change was I didn't make increases for, when you make a gusset on a top sock, you make the gusset and then you do the little, uh, before you start doing the heel, you make increases between those gusset stitches so that when you knit up the back of the heel, you have enough for your slip stitches because slip stitches are shorter than regular stitches. So I didn't do those increases because I didn't need to because I wasn't doing slip stitches across the heel. I was just doing colour work. The yarns I used are Cascade Heritage in pumpkin for the orange and I think it was Drops Fable in just plain black for the black. Um, knitting black was not very fun on socks and there was a lot of daytime knitting with this one. But anyway, I will hand over to Past Mel for now and she will tell you and show you the finished socks. Hi, it's Past Melanie here and it's also Halloween Melanie, which is why I am in my Halloween best. I finally finished these. It's actually technically no Halloween. It is the 1st of November, but I am doing Halloween over two days. So I finished the Hubble Bubble Double Trouble socks. I'm trying to remember because I don't have the pattern to hand, but hopefully future Mel will have shown you the pattern or will be showing you the pattern. I have finished both socks, literally just finished. I've woven in the ends on one sock. I just need to finish weaving in the ends on this sock and then I'm going to put them on my feet, which is why I'm showing them now. I have done contrast toes and heels and cup and I have done opposite colours for either sock. So the second sock has orange contrast toes, heels and cuff and one of them has black. 
Also, the color work on either heel is slightly different. So this one, this jack-o'-lantern has a like a jaggedy mouth there that you can see. And this one, which I won't be able to show you very well on the blockers, but it has like a, just a little wee mouth there. I will take it off the blocker in a moment. The yarns I've used, I have used the orange is Cascade Heritage in the colorway Pumpkin. And the black is just Drops Fable in black. I have slip stitched the orange stripes just on the ball of the foot because it is a merino nylon blend yarn if it will focus there we go so i've just slip stitched the orange stripes themselves and a little bit there at the base of the toe i've also put some short rows at e either end of the slip stitch part i'm not sure what else there is to say really i have done a two by two rib if i take this one off the blockers i can show better the color work on the second sock with this little this little wee mouth there and I really like them. The orange, like I said, is merino nylon, which is why I've done the slip stitches to reinforce and make them a little more hard wearing. But I've not bothered doing that with the black. And because it has colour work on the heels, I have not done slip stitches on the back of the heel either. Although I have done eye of partridge slip stitches on the heel turn, which I'm not sure will show up here. I'm working under artificial light because it, because it is already dark outside. I have done my usual toe up, Turkish cast on, 2x2 two two rib and gusset. I think that's all there is to say. I've used 2.25mm needles and yeah. So I will hand you back to future Mel. So hopefully past Mel remembered everything but otherwise I have two active works in progress. I have shown the previous works in progress on the episode that are not finished yet, but I haven't been working on them because I'm trying to get a head start on my Christmas knitting. I hadn't planned on making Christmas gifts. Well, I kind of had, I've just kind of forgotten. And one of them is one that I hadn't planned on. I am knitting two pairs of socks for my husband for Christmas. One of which I am most of the way through. And I'm knitting a shawl for my mum for Christmas, which wasn't planned. I wasn't going to knit gifts this year. But, I don't know, I just strike of inspiration, I guess. So what I am working on is this, which it looks super bright. It is super bright. It looks even more super bright on camera. I haven't got very far yet. But this is the, is the Dotted Rays Shawl by Stephen West. I'm holding it this way because this is the top edge and as you can see it has these kind of radiating asymmetrical crescent sections along the shawl and it's got to the point where the needles really I could do with going on a slightly longer cable um, you can see it makes these kind of wedge shapes as you go too so i'm working on the pink and orange at the moment and i've been you had it have I used pink and green and such like and it's going to be really brightly colored it also has these great big eyelets as well so as you can kind of see i try not to pull it off the needles how it's starting to work up and it is more round at the bottom but there you go so it's kind of like that and I'm really loving working on this. I thought I would work on, you know, if I work on one section a night, I will get through it and I can work on one section then go on to another project that I'm working on. But actually, I'm finding I've just been working on this almost exclusively because I'm really enjoying it. It's kind of, because the way it works up, you've got kind of segments, like kind of wedge shapes. So you think, oh, I'll just knit that wedge shape. And then you've got like a double row where you make the eyelets. So you think you get to the end of the wedge, you know, I'll just do the eyelets so it's set up ready for next time. And then you think, oh, well, I'm nearly at the end of this colour. So if I just use up this, so it kind of goes on and on like that. The yarns that I'm using are going to be a struggle to show you, but they are 
a whole lot of minis that I have from a yarn advent from a few years ago. And if I just hold up like a couple of handfuls of them without throwing them completely all over the floor, you can see I have a lot. They're all from this one advent calendar. There are more as well. There's like purples and there's blues and there's yellows and stuff. And they some of them are semi-solids with kind of speckles and some of them are like a variegated or self striping as with or without speckles too. The yarn is by the Dye Shack. I believe, did she change her name recently? I think it's still the Dye Shack, Dye Shed, Dye Shed, Dye Shack. I will put the name on the screen and obviously the link down below in the box. So if I've got the name wrong, but I will put them down anyway. Like I said, the pattern is the Dotted Rays by Stephen West. And this is going to be the worst photo for showing on, even in colour, the shawl because he blends it to the background but you can see it is a you can see kind of see the rays the dots and rays and stuff i'm knitting it on a four millimeter needle and i think i have 200 grams worth of those minis so it'll make a good size shawl it's going to look fab i don't wear a lot of bright colors or if i do they tend to be more jewel tones my mum wears a lot more brighter colors so it's going to go fab with my mum's clothes compared to mine I don't know if I'll show it again before Christmas I might because mum knows that she's getting it she knows the design because she decided I gave her a choice of what designs and she chose this one so she knows the pattern I'm using and she knows the yarn I'm using so I might show it again on the podcast depends how far I get with it but if it's close to finish I might not in which case I will record another past mail segment and I will show it after Christmas as she, after she has received it. The only other work in progress I have on the needles that I'm actually working on at the moment is these socks for John. Like I said, I am working on two pairs of socks for John for Christmas. The second pair I haven't started, but they're kind of licorice all sorts inspired. But we'll get to those when I finish these. These ones, I've already knit one whole sock and I am working on the second one at the moment. And I will show the finished sock when I finish the pair otherwise there would be no point finish showing you the second one would they i am using king cole zigzag for the main body of the sock i think i have the label in here i do and it is king cole zigzag there we go and the colorway is called beige which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense considering there isn't a whole lot of beige in the yarn. I mean, it does have beige. It has, you know, beige here and I guess you could vaguely call the cream beige, but it's mostly other colours. It has brown and it has grey and it's got blue, very bright turquoise blue and green and a kind of a red colour. And you can kind of see in the ball. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, it's beige, but it's not really beige. So I'm using this for the body and for the toes I'm using yet more leftover drop sock yarn in this colour green. I think this one's called apple. If it's not called apple it should be because it is an apple green and I chose that because of the green flecks rather than just go boring and have like grey toes or something like that. I do like a contrast toes, contrast toes, a contrast toe and heel and cuff. So yes, I am working on the main part of the sock at the moment. I'm trying to do these when John is at work. Uh, he has seen the first one, so I don't know why I'm trying to be more subtle about it. Maybe he'll forget what they look like by Christmas. So I've been working on this when he's at work in the afternoons. And uh, yeah, not a lot to say. Turkish cast on, toe up, gusset slip stitch heel two by two rib i think you know it's 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 fairly straightforward but hopefully the next episode well by the next episode, i should have finished these and i'll be able to show off the entire pair and uh be working on the second pair because i would like to get the christmas knitting done a little bit before christmas rather than last minute 
um i don't want to be rushed again um it just gets too overwhelming otherwise when you've got all the festivity things coming up through the holiday season and then trying to do extra projects on top and, and i want to knit myself some stuff as well i mean i have a lot of christmas sock yarn i would like some more christmas socks i usually i say usually i like to try and knit myself a pair of christmas socks every year and i have quite a selection to choose from now so yeah so that is my second work in progress for this episode and all of the knitting content as a side note in case you're wondering the dress that i'm wearing underneath this cardigan is the penny dress i made this from some from some vintage fabric a year or two ago so yes it's the penny dress and i love it it has pockets it has pockets always an advantage i don't think the original design had pockets but i added front you know like scooped front pockets to the skirt which is my favorite pocket to add to anything if I can get away with it because if you have side pockets in a dress it pulls the dress to one side but front pockets is perfect and they're perfect size to slot my phone in so it's always to hand when I'm doing bits and bobs as for life stuff not a lot happening at the moment I finished vlogtober in October or 31st and I had been over to mum's for a week or so and mum came off to visit and she went home I think it was the 1st of November 1st or the 2nd anyway so we had visitors and not a lot has happened since then it's kind of been a catchy up sort of kind of a week and a half I've had to finish off projects at home and just have a bit of a rest to and just put some plans in place for the next couple of months it has gone really dark in here so I do apologize I suspect I'm gonna to to dash off in a moment to fetch my washing in because there is a very dark cloud out there covering the Sun it's kind of like the reverse of April showers really at this time of year isn't it so I'm going to wrap this up now I think because I don't think there's anything else to share. Other than future knitting plans, I have John's licorice all sorts socks to do to start. I have Christmas socks for myself to knit. I've got my red moon sweater to finish, which I have got probably a third of the way down the body from the underarm so that's just stock and it so I need to crack on with that so I would like that finished and I have my nightfall cardigan to work on as well I have a lot of projects coming up and then I'm not going to get much knitting like kind of Chris I'm not going to get a Christmas sweater knit this year that's for sure um but Christmas socks would be good I'll just have to do wintry garments once we get into the new year. Okay, so I'm going to sign off for now because this is getting really long. But I will see you on the next episode. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.